गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू एन बी वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत इनिशिएटिव सो टूडे वी हैव विथ अस डॉक्टर कद्रेशन फ्रॉम अन्नामलाई यूनिवर्सिटी हु इज ए एक्सपर्ट ऑन मैंग्रोव अंडर एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत इनिशिएटिव इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस अलॉन्ग विथ जी बी पंत इंस्टीट्यूट वी कंडक्ट सीरीज ऑफ वेबिनार्स फॉर एनहेंसिंग द नॉलेज सो टूडे वी हैव टेकन द थीम ऑन मैंग्रोव विच इज ए रूट ऑफ द सी so ek bharat shreshth bharat initiative uh, is a uh, initiative from the prime minister narendra modi ji to share the uh, share and promote the uh, culture diversity as well as environment uh, initiate activities and also tradition music tourism cuisine sports as well as sharing best practice among the various states so under this karnataka state has been paired with uttarakhand so uh, in that uh, ek bharat shreshth bharat program we are uh, having the webinars so uh, yesterday we also celebrated world health day so this year theme is our uh, planet and our health so which echoes if the uh, planet is in a good condition so our health is also uh, ensured so that's where the uh, maintaining the healthy planet is the need of the hour in this regard so mangroves has a effective role in the uh, managing the ecosystem and which is uh, considered as the highest carbon storage uh, uh, areas so uh, in this regard uh, we have with us uh, dr kadreshan from annamalai university so he is a expert on mangroves and his interest includes marine biology marine botany mangroves bio, mangrove biodiversity conservation and management and also uh, eco restoration through the mangrove uh, mangroves so he he is a recipient of uh, tamil nadu state uh, scientist award and also he is a, a national biotechnology associateship uh, uh, he is a recipient of national biotechnology associateship and also he is a recipient of naga uh, international award in the year 2001 he is a distinguished teacher from annamalai university uh, which is awarded in 2009 he is considered as a ugc bsr faculty fellow award he is a honorary professor from annamalai university uh, uh, and also uh, he has a national institute of ecology fellowship and also mangrove uh, he is a fellow of uh, mangrove society of india so uh, he has guided 22 master students 38 phd students he has published in uh, three more than 350 papers in uh, peer reviewed international and as well as national journals and also he has handled 17 projects which have the uh, nation importance so with this brief introduction i welcome uh, dr kadreshan uh, who has uh, uh, no need for any introduction because he is the person who has worked more in the field and also uh, uh, he is one among the uh, scientists who uh, done most of the research in the field so with this brief introduction i request kadreshan sir to share his views on mangroves which is known as a root of the sea over to you sir thank you most brainy and beautiful listeners speaking is easy but listening is difficult because speaking is skill listening is an attitude so i must thank all the listeners and i must be thankful to nvs indian institute of science bengaluru specifically professor ramachandra and dr bharat i am going to speak on mangroves root of the sea mangroves are marvel of nature ecological wonder scenic splendor and they are considered to be the root of the sea if you consider sea as the tree and the root is mangroves so sea without mangroves is like a tree without root so mangroves are very important for the marine environment what are mangroves mangroves are the only tall tree forest in the intertidal areas of tropical and subtropical coasts so mangroves are only tall tree forest between land and sea in the tropical and subtropical coastal environment 
Mangroves are also known as oceanic rainforest, tidal forest, coastal woodland, blue carbon forest. The only blue carbon forest on the earth is none other than mangrove forest. And the mangroves are highly productive, highly productive. And mangrove biomass is greater than any other aquatic systems on the earth. I love mangroves like my own wife. She is not my wife. I had my honeymoon trip in Pichavaram mangrove forest. So I have an intimacy with the mangroves, the love with mangroves, not just because of its beauty, uh, but its usefulness to the mankind. Mangroves are biologically diverse. This is due to the habitat diversity. In mangrove ecosystem, we have forest, mud flats, water bodies. Since mangroves are located between land and sea, both terrestrial and aquatic marine organisms are living together in the mangrove ecosystem. Mangroves are carbon rich forest, carbon rich forest. Global mangroves store 21 gigatons of carbon and the mangroves are a rare forest type and the mangroves occupy just 13.8 million hectares in 118 countries. So 13.8 million hectares in 118 countries means the forest mangrove forest occupies just less than 0.4% of all forests on the earth. So therefore, it is a rare forest type. And mangroves are likely to disappear in 100 years. Within 100 years, the mangrove forest will disappear from the world. Therefore, it is threatened habitat on earth. The dinosaur and mangroves were born at the same geological time. But dinosaur disappeared. Mangroves are still thriving. How is it possible? How the mangroves are extremophile ecosystem? They are surviving millions and millions of years. What is the reason? This is because of the remarkable adaptations mangroves have. No other groups of plants in the entire plant kingdom have so many adaptations as uh, mangroves have. We deep Paris germination. The seeds are germinating in the mother plant itself. And the mangrove plants are drinking seawater as Coca-Cola, separating the salt and the salts are vomited, vomited through the salt glands present on the leaves. What an excellent mechanism of separating salts from seawater. And the soil is anaerobic, poor in oxygen. So therefore, the roots are negatively geotrophic. And these aerial roots have got minute openings. And through these minute openings, oxygen is sucked inside to overcome the oxygen deficiency in the soil. 
and since the soil is slushy and the mangroves are developing extra stem support structures they are called stilt root pillar roots like that so they have unique aerial roots the roots are mostly you know on the above the soil and also below the soil mangroves are extraordinary in salt regulation the water will move from soil to root when the root accumulates more salt than the soil then only the water will move from soil to root if the water has to move from root to shoot the shoot should accumulate more salt than root then only the water will move through osmosis if the water has to move from stem to leaves the leaves have to accumulate more salts than the stem so naturally the leaves accumulate more more salts if you take a single cell of mangrove leaf 80% of the cell volume is occupied by cell vacuole and the protoplasm is just 20% of the cell volume so where do you find more salts so more salts are accumulating in the cell vacuole so the cell vacuole have high salt concentration the protoplasm has low salt concentration so as per osmosis the water has to move from protoplasm to vacuoles if it happens the protoplasm will dry the cell will die the whole plant will die but it is not happening so the protoplasm is uh, tremendously synthesizing the molecules which will bind the water molecules not allowing the water molecules to pass through uh, the uh, cell vacuole so this is an extraordinary salt regulatory mechanism so based on the salt regulating mechanism of mangroves japanese developed a large desalination plant in okinawa japan and they are converting the sea water into sweet water for drinking purpose in fact i visited this uh, desalination factory in okinawa then i discussed uh, with them how they developed uh, uh, this gadget based on the mangrove mechanism uh, can you identify where i am staying audience listeners can you identify yes you see all the foreigners are looking at the gadget only fellow looking at the camera is none other than myself because i am an indian this is a unique feature of an indian if you want to identify an indian in an international gathering you flash your camera whoever is looking at your camera must be an indian see not only indian when i opened my camera see buffalo was uh, looking at my camera and smiling because it is uh, indian buffalo so this is a unique feature and if you if you look at the economic value of ecosystem services and uh, you compare the deep sea coastal plankton sea grass tidal marsh mangroves have the greatest economic value of ecosystem services so very clear the economic value of ecosystem services of mangroves are the greatest among the marine systems today the serious global issue global threat is climate change 
ह्यूमन डिसीजेस आर इंक्रीसिंग चिकन गुनिया मटन गुनिया बीफ गुनिया फोर गुनिया प्रॉन गुनिया क्रैब गुनिया ऑल गुनिया लाइक डिसीजेस आर क्रॉपिंग अप बिकॉज ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज now the new viral transmission is intensified due to climate change and carbon dioxide level is increasing now it is uh, the world average is 414 ppm so when the carbon dioxide level is increasing in the atmosphere it causes this human sickness headache body pain respiratory tract infections uh, fever all these symptoms are exactly similar to covid so therefore the carbon dioxide has a great role to play on spoiling human health so the need of the hour is to reduce 7% atmospheric carbon dioxide if not the temperature will exceed 2 degree centigrade and impacts will become catastrophic dangerous so what is the potential solution for this the immediate solution for this global threat is nothing but mangroves 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 can provide the potential solution for this serious global threat i made a study with the restored mangrove forest 25 year old mangrove forest then i compared it with the barren area adjoining barren area i found the 10000 fold greater carbon sequestration in the restored mangrove ecosystem when compared to barren area so mangroves are extraordinary in carbon sequestration if you compare the tropical forest salt to marsh mangroves and sea grasses and you see the mangroves sequester 10 times greater than tropical forests so the carbon sequestration potential of mangroves is tremendous and very significant mangroves are the superstars and super stores of carbon how is it possible because mangroves are very efficient in photosynthetic activity absorbing high quantity of atmospheric carbon dioxide and storing it in the form of biomass i have estimated how much of carbon dioxide is removed by our indian mangroves daily 93 million tons of carbon dioxide are removed daily 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 by the indian mangroves and not only that a lot of carbon is stored in the mangrove soil sediments the carbon storage is up to 6 meter depth in the mangrove forest and the carbon is stored for millions of years where terrestrial forest can store carbon up to 30 cm depth that too for a few decades so mangrove store carbon at the deeper soil for a longer period so mangroves are very efficient in carbon storage so mainly because of the anaerobic condition the 90% of the soil domain is free from oxygen so therefore carbon is locked up arrested in the mangrove sediments today india's target is 
we need to have the additional carbon sink of 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide by increasing the forest cover by 2030. So by 2030, we have to increase the forest cover, thereby increasing the additional carbon sink of 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide. So in this context, mangroves are very important. Mangroves are keeping the environment cool, cool, cool. This is proved in Abu Dhabi city, United Arab Emirates. The Abu Dhabi city was very hot and the heat waves reflect the absence of green infrastructure. So the mangrove park was developed in Abu Dhabi city. The, after uh, the growth of this uh, mangrove park, the right in the center of the city, what happened? Now Abu Dhabi city is cool, cool because of the mangrove forests. So when the mangroves are removing the carbon dioxide, so the carbon dioxide is not in high quantity to absorb the heat energy and making the environment hot. So this is experimentally proved in Abu Dhabi. And today, whatever it is, mangroves are destroyed, sea grasses are destroyed, salt marshes are destroyed. And due to this destruction, carbon is emitted out. There is a heavy economic loss. For example, mangrove, the carbon emission due to deforestation is 0.24 picogram carbon dioxide per year and the economic loss due to the deforestation is 9.6 billion US dollars per year. In the same way sea grasses, salt marsh, but among the three blue carbon ecosystems, mangroves, you know, are very much destroyed leading to heavy economic loss. So therefore, the need of the hour is mangrove restoration, mangrove restoration. And there are three blue carbon ecosystems, mangroves, seagrass, salt marshes. The salt marshes are herbs or shrubs only. Seagrasses are grasses, actually not grasses, they are monocot plants, completing the whole cycle under the sea flowering, seed setting, everything under the sea. And mangroves are the only, only blue carbon forest ecosystem on the earth. So mangrove restoration is need of the hour. And today ocean acidification is a problem. Normally, the sea water is uh, alkaline in nature. So the alkalinity keeps on reducing due to higher carbon dioxide dissolution in the sea water. So because of the acidification, coral bleaching takes place. Corals are bleached out and the shells are corroded and the marine organisms are suffering. So in this context, mangroves export alkalinity to the tune of about 4.2 trillion mole per year to the coastal waters. So mangroves prevent ocean acidification and coral bleaching. If you say mangroves are the heroes and the fishes are heroines. So mangroves support fishes. No mangroves, no pram. No mangroves, no crabs. No forest on land, no fish in the sea. Mangroves serve feeding, breeding, nursery, grounds for prawns, crabs, mollusks and fish. So 75% of the tropical fishes, 75% of the tropical fishes 
are born within mangroves 80% of the world fish catch 80% of the world fish catch is dependent on mangroves so mangroves are essentially important for supporting the fish resources of marine environment 90% of the marine organisms spend part of their life cycle in mangrove coastal waters you know the deep sea from the deep sea young ones young fishes are coming to mangroves because the young ones require protein rich food 45% should be protein in the diet so protein rich diet is not available in the sea so therefore young ones are coming to the coastal waters and mangrove waters since the protein rich food is available after eating this uh, horlicks farex healthy food they are growing fast after attaining a sub adult stage they go back to the deep sea getting married without dowry you know without a caste creed or anything like that releasing the young ones and the young ones are again coming back to mangrove coastal waters so this life cycle is continued if the mangroves are cleared off then the marine organism life cycle will be affected 90% of marine organisms will be affected mangroves are important nursery grounds the hydrological connectivity hydrological connectivity determines mangrove productivity when you say mangrove forest wetland the sea water tidal water is coming from the neritic water or nearby sea and the fresh water is coming from upland so if we construct any barrage the fresh water entry will be reduced if the river mouth is silted up the sea water entry will be prevented so mangrove forest wetland will shrink so therefore the hydrological connectivity is important for ensuring mangrove productivity and yeah, not only that the fishes are marine fishes are coming to mangrove wetland and the fresh water fishes are going to the sea for breeding purpose so if any blockage or hydrological connectivity is interfered to a greater extent that will affect the productivity of mangrove forests and their fish production so therefore we need to keep this in mind and the mangroves are producing enormous leaf litter per hectare area every year 8 tons of leaves are falling down and the leaf litter is cut by the crabs decomposed by microorganisms especially nitrogen fixing microorganisms so what happen the leaves uh, are converted into decomposing organic matter that is called detritus and the detritus food is rich in nitrogen because of nitrogen fixing bacteria and the detritus food is very much essential for the fishes especially young ones not only that during the decomposition process the nitrogen and phosphorus nutrients are released at the same time the leaf litter is leaching polyphenols and organic acids the polyphenol and organic acids convert the insoluble iron into soluble iron so therefore iron is available nitrogen phosphorus available and these three are essential for 
phytoplankton photosynthetic activity and when they are available phytoplankton productivity is tremendously increased when the phytoplankton productivity is increased the zooplankton population is increased and the zooplankton are consumed by small fishes and the small fishes are eaten by larger fishes and the bioproductivity of the system is increased not only that the nitrogen phosphorus and iron released in the mangrove waters finding way to sea grasses and coral reefs which are present in the coastal waters so therefore the bioproductivity phytoplankton productivity and other productivity secondary productivity and all increased in the sea grasses and coral reef systems of the coastal environment and the crustaceans mollusks they feed on the leaves mangrove leaves mangrove flowers mangrove fruits and also they feed on the algae present on the surface of the mangrove plants parts so therefore they are getting very nice food for their growth in addition mangrove forest have complex structure you see the dense root system it's an ideal shelter hiding place for fishes and very calm quiet place for living of fishes whereas the sea environment is very rough and the fishes can hide themselves from the predatory fishes because of the complex forest structure and we studied the impact of solar uvb radiation in the mangrove ecosystem on the top of the canopy ultraviolet b was 12.5 kilo joules per meter square per second but below the canopy zero uvb incidence so therefore the under canopy area is free from uvb radiation so therefore this is an eye because uvb is biologically lethal and the mangrove canopy is free from uvb radiation we have found so it's an ideal home for the fish and the mangrove area if it increases the fish population and the fish resources are increasing mangrove support 70% greater fishes than sea grasses and coral reef systems so mangroves and uh, fish production they go hand in hand i was running after the fisher women for more than 2 years don't mistake me for collecting data so i collected data from the fisher women because very responsible ladies how much of fishes they are selling every day in the mangrove area and in the in the small mangrove area and the non mangrove area we made a comparison if you take 1 hectare mangrove area we found 1 million finfish and 3.6 million invertebrate individuals are present so mangrove support the livelihood of the coastal people and ensuring the food security of the coastal population and our center of advanced study in marine biology demonstrated the crab fattening say crab is an excellent uh, food and the crab can be very well cultured in the mangrove waters the crabs grown in mangrove waters is very large and the crab fattening is successfully demonstrated to the local people 
and we have demonstrated the oyster clam muscle cultures fin fish culture especially ornamental fish in floating cages seaweed culture and the fish processing and value added products so there are lot of uh, options for increasing the livelihood of the mangrove dependent people and the mangroves can be integrated with agriculture aquaculture say for example we can grow mangroves then next to mangroves fish pond fish culture pond and in the center we can have the crop plant agricultural crop plant we can have it so agriculture aquaculture then mangrove silviculture can be integrated and in addition we can grow pigs ducks and also you know uh, the poultry uh, uh, product poultry uh, uh, items you know goat and all can be grown here chick go, goats can be grown here and the droppings can add the nutritive value Uh, uh nitrogen i mean uh, the nutritional value of this uh, aquaculture pond and the fish growth is increased so this sort of integration of the natural systems will help the local people in future we should develop more models in this aspect if you have mangroves it will be like this if you don't have mangroves it will become like this so mangroves provide coastal protection and the shoreline erosion is prevented and the cyclone effect is prevented and in 1999 there was a super cyclone in odisha and 10000 people died at that time so government of india sent a committee i was also one of the members in the committee we could see everywhere the dead bodies in the water the women children and only dead bodies everywhere on the water but in one place no death that is pitarkanika mangrove forest so therefore the mangroves are the saviors of the coastal population from the fiery effect of uh, the natural disasters and the flood every year we are getting the problem of flood if we have the mangroves the flood will not enter into the human dwellings if you don't have mangroves they will enter into the human dwellings so it is estimated 1 hectare of mangrove can protect 243 people and the mangroves save the wealth of 65 billion us dollars annually in the world by way of flood protection and the mangroves play a vital role in removal of water pollutants and ensuring the water quality for example the heavy metals the most of the heavy metals are converted into sulfides and the metal sulfides are buried deep deep into the soil so the toxic uh, heavy metals are not available to the environment causing pollution so removal of water pollutants and maintaining the water quality secondly mangrove soil will prevent the salt uh, intrusion into the land and protecting the ground water ground water so ensuring the water security of the coastal population and mangroves are of spiritual value in uh, karnataka kalika mandir kalika temple 
the kalika temple surrounded by mangroves in kali nadi is being preserved as sacred shrine by the forest department and not only that in tamil nadu chidambaram a mangrove species is called exocaria agloka this is being worshipped in the lord nadraja temple as thala vriksha temple tree because this uh, plant is uh, producing a white milk like substance if it falls into the ice blindness will be caused and people are worshiping this uh, 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 plant and it is medicinally valuable to treat against leprosy and if you go to sundarbans we have bana bibi temple so this temple you have the hindu goddess muslim god and tiger they call it as tiger mama because he is a dangerous fellow so they uh, you can see the religious integrity in the temple and one belief of the local people is if you don't worship in this temple the tiger mama will make a note of it kadiresan for an annamalai university not worshiped so immediately this tiger fellow will follow and follow that person not worshiped in the temple it will jump at the back side jump at the back side catch hold of the neck and break kill the man so i never worshiped in this temple because expecting the tiger to follow me but no tiger followed me anyway so the tiger will jump only at the back side not front side so our bengali brothers you know indian very brainy indians they wear mask they wear mask like this so the tiger is searching for the back side no back side because of the mask the tiger is fooled and they are not killing anybody in the forest so therefore the mangroves are of spiritual value you see the mangroves especially abyssinia marina is capable of growing in 250% sea water they can grow the temperature more than 40 degree centigrade so high salt tolerant high temperature tolerant so now the agricultural productivity is affected by salinity and drought in 900 million hectares leading to the annual loss of 27 billion us dollars in the world so in this context professor m s saminathan has given an innovative idea of separating the salt tolerant genes from mangroves and introducing it in the crop plants therefore we can have a crop plant or crop plants Uh, be, be, to be cultivated along the coast using sea water which will be resistant uh, which will be resistant to you know salt as well as the temperature and so this uh, mangrove gene prospecting is being carried out in our country india is known for the innovativeness mangroves are gold mine of novel chemicals potential for life saving drugs and mangroves are rich in polyphenols polysaccharides terpenoids steroids alkaloids peptides so this can inhibit both rna and dna viruses and kill the cancer cells and preventing the diabetes and we have proved all this uh, you know uh things and the polio viruses jandis and aids hiv virus aids causing hiv viruses could be very well controlled by the mangroves what about corona virus yet to take up 
research in this aspect. So therefore, mangroves medicinal value is tremendous. And Indian mangroves as on date, according to the latest data, Forest Survey of India, 4,992 square kilometer, 4,992 square kilometer. Of this 42% present in Sundarban, 24% in Gujarat. So put together in these two places, 66% of Indian mangroves are present only in these two places. The, these two places are very rough coastal environment. And the tidal amplitude is 2 to 7 meters in these places. Very rough coast, tidal bore. But even then, the vast area of mangroves are present in Gujarat and Sundarbans. And uh, east coast of India, we have 57% of Indian mangroves. West coast of India, supports 31% of Indian mangroves. Andaman Nicobar, 12% of Indian mangroves. Now the question is, why this East Coast has got more mangrove forests? The reason is, if you take a cross section of uh, our country, from West to East Coast, you can see the East Coast has got smooth slope. Since it has the smooth slope, you have more intertidal area for mangrove colonization. But west coast of India, you have steep slope. So intertidal area is narrow. And east coast, we have deltas due to mighty rivers. Whereas the deltas are absent because of uh, the funnel-shaped estuaries, the deltas are absent along the west coast of India. So because of this reason, mangroves are dense and floristically diverse on the east coast of India. Can you identify this uh, most beautiful specimen? I, myself only. This is the most beautiful picture ever taken in my lifetime. Even in the marriage album, I am not beautiful. Here I am very beautiful because I am working in mangroves. What I have done is, I traveled all the mangroves of our country, visited uh, all the fields, collected data on how many species, plant, animal species have been recorded so far. So I combined 5,745 species to be present in the mangrove ecosystems of India. No other countries in the world have recorded so many species to be present in the mangrove forest ecosystem. So India has the highest record of biodiversity. 43 mangrove species, 880 other floral species, 4,822 faunal species, remarkable. And if you say which one is the mangrove plant paradise of the world, nothing but Pitarkanika, Odisha. 74% of Indian mangrove species are present in a very small island called Kali Banjdiya. Very small island, 74% of Indian mangrove species are present in a small place. Sundari, Sundarban is named after Sundari, mangrove species. But Sundari is uh, disappearing fast. Not only in India, globally it is fast disappearing. But that Sundari is abundantly present in Pitarkanika. So plant, uh, mangrove plant paradise of the world is present in India, in Pitarkanika. What about mangrove animal paradise of the world? 
So a mangrove faunal paradise of the world is Sundarbans. Globally threatened species like tigers, fishing cat, gangetic dolphin, Yeshurine crocodile, horseshoe crabs, water monitor lizard, river terrapin, all these globally threatened species are present in Sundarban. And Sundarban is the largest mangrove forest in the world. Bangladesh and India put together 10,000 square kilometer, largest mangrove forest in the world. And uh, Sundarban is the only mangrove tiger kingdom of the world. This is the only mangrove forest where the tigers are present. And uh, where is the world's largest nesting site of the sea turtle, olive ridley, that is nearer to mangroves in India, uh, especially in Pitarkaniga. At a time, you can see, you know, 0.5 billion, billion olive ridley young ones. And they are laying the eggs. If the temperature is very hot, the egg will hatch out into females. And the temperature is low, the hatchlings will become male. So, Sakti is born under adverse conditions and the females are mostly now hatchlings are females. After 70 days of hatching, the turtle babies will go to the sea, started swimming and taking 356 degree turn, going to Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, all foreign countries without visa, without passport. After 65 years, they will come back to the same place where it was born. And uh, this is the unique feature of uh, olive ridley turtle, which are abundant in the mangrove areas. Whale shark. Whale shark is the largest fish in the sea. And in the Saurashtra coast, Gujarat, you have plenty of whale shark coming from Australia. But unfortunately, every year, 250 whale sharks were killed. So, government of India put a ban in 2001, but it was failed to control. So, one Murari Babu, a preacher, came to the fishermen, called the fishermen, then asked, what is this? This is a whale shark, they said. The preacher said, it's not whale shark, Amara Betty. Our Indian daughter, why she is coming from Australia? Because this Indian daughter got married to Australia. And what for this uh, Indian daughter is coming to motherland? For delivering babies. So how can you kill your own daughter when she is pregnant? And when she is coming to your motherland? So people started weeping and stopped catching the whale shark. So our people are, uh, you know, sentimentally attached to people. If you touch their sentiment, they can conserve the nature better. And intertidal mudflats, they are teeming with birds, kingfishers, spoonbills. Egrets, stoke, and whatnot. And uh, mangroves are habitat for endemic animal species brown winged kingfisher, great plump back, and mangrove whistler, mangrove uh, pit viper, and magbee robin. These are all endemic to mangrove area. And the mangrove cover is increasing in India annually by 0.2%. But in the world, it is disappearing at the rate of 0.7% annually. For example, 
there was an increase of 17 square kilometer of mangrove forest in India. What is the economic impact? I calculated. The fish catch increased by 0.1 million ton, equivalent to 4,117 million rupees. And the additional carbon stock of 1.3 million tons of carbon dioxide, and which is equivalent to rupees 223 million million rupees. So I consider only fish catch and carbon stock. What about the tourism value? There are 4,000 tourism sites in the world, mangrove sites, multi-billion industries. And honey, in Sundarbal alone, every year 50,000 kilograms of honey collected. And uh, in Gujarat, there is one community called Maldaris. The Maldaris livelihood is dependent on camel herding, camel growing in the mangrove areas. And uh, the mangrove leaves are excellent feed for the cattle camels because the leaves are rich in protein and in India we are wisely managing mangroves by three strategies promotory regulatory and participatory in the participatory management we involve local community in the regulatory we have the coastal and marine protected areas. In the promontory, we have 38 mangrove areas all over the country and implementing management action plan. In Karnataka, we have Kundapur, Dakshin Kannada, Anover, Karwar, Mangalore Forest Division. Uh, the management action plan is being implemented efficiently. Mangroves in Karnataka is very unique. Very small area, 0.3% of the Indian mangrove cover is present in Karnataka. You see, you have Dakshin Canada, 0.45 uh, square kilometer, Uttar Canada, 10.47 square kilometer, Udupi, it is 1.69, and 83% of the Karnataka mangrove is present in Uttar Canada. Whatever it is, it is only 13 square kilometer, that is just 0.3% of Indian mangrove cover. But rich 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 in biodiversity 44 percent of the indian mangrove species are present in karnataka and the rhizopora mucorneta avicinia apisnalis sonaracea apetala candelia candle are common species and uh, in karnataka if you look at the mangrove cover which was three square kilometer from 2003 to 2015 then 2017 onwards, you see 10 square kilometer, 19, 10 square kilometer. Now it is 13 square kilometer. So it increases, the mangrove cover increases in Karnataka thanks to the efforts taken by the forest department. However, in India, we have the open stunted mangrove forest 40%. The very dense mangrove 30%, moderately dense 30%. So in Karnataka, unfortunately, 85% of the mangroves are open, sparse, less dense. And 15% of the mangroves are moderately dense, but no very dense mangrove forest present in Karnataka. So rehabilitation of the open mangrove area is important. Now, how to better manage mangroves? So we need to do the ecosystem evaluate, valuation. And the policy and decision making should consider the full value of mangroves. And conservation and vice use develop the participatory management plans. We have to restore to revive biodiversity and life. Hydrological connectivity, we revet to the dry areas, community nurseries to produce seedlings and restoration, coastal cleanup programs, community monitoring, a public private partnership. So we need to restore to revive biodiversity and life. Unfortunately, I told you mangroves are degrading. So what is the reason for this? So I compared the degrading mangroves with luxuriant mangrove. 
and found the high salinity is the main reason for mangrove degradation. If the salinity is high, the nutrient availability is low and the beneficial bacterial count will become less. So can we convert to the mangrove, degrading mangroves into luxuriant one? Answer is yes. The technology is available. Canal bank planting technique for tidal flushing and restoration of degrading mangroves as proposed by MS Swaminathan Foundation and Forest Departments. Very successfully demonstrated. And my success story is this. I involved my students creating mangrove forest. When I involved boys alone, the mangrove planting program was a failure. When I involved the girl students, it was 100% success. It is because of the student boys. And in the presence of uh, girls, the boys are very active and very much interested in mangrove plantation. So therefore, I learned from my experience that if you have flower in your hand, honey bees will come automatically. So if you want to do any constructive program, involve our girl children and boys and constructive programs can be developed. So I involved my boys and girls in creating mangrove forest and monitoring the artificially developed mangrove forest. Within 10 years, 120 times of prawn resources increased. So the local people started respecting our students. You look at this place. This is just opposite to my center developed by my students. And you see the boating jetty. This is in 1990 before tsunami. You see tsunami, Asian tsunami, December 26, 2004, a tragedy in the human history after World War. What happened? The long boat jetty was broken into pieces. The engineering structure was broken into pieces. But the mangrove structure was not heavily damaged. And the concrete structure was broken into pieces, but not mangroves. But mangroves saved thousands of human lives. And after this, uh, you know, tsunami, the people rushed to my department. And then uh, they prostrated in front of me and crying out. It is because of the mangrove forest developed by your students. Our lives were saved. When they were crying out, I felt as if I got Nobel Prize for the efforts of my students. So student power is the greatest power in the world, I realized. Today the problem is sea level rise. The sea level rise is 3 to 4 millimeter per year now. It is going to become 6 millimeter per year in 2050. 80% of the Sundarban will go under the sea by 2050. Tigers will vanish entirely within 50 years by 2070. 95% of the Mumbai mangroves will perish in 30 years. The percentage of erosion due to sea level rise, if you take Karnataka, 38%. So Karnataka also facing the problem of sea level rise. So what is the solution for sea level rise? One innovative idea developed by the Singaporean, I want to share with you. You see, in Singapore, is also facing a problem of sea level rise. What they do is, they collect the solid waste from the people every day and convert the solid waste into ashes. And the ashes are dumped in the sea and the mangroves are grown around and they are developing the artificial mangrove islands. If at all the Singapore is going under the sea due to sea level rise, the people will be saved and they will be evacuated and then they will be safely, you know, uh, colonized in the artificial mangrove islands 
blue urbanization is possible. Today, Maldives, they are developing the floating cities. And uh, you see one side solid waste is managed, other side the climate change is also, you know, mitigated. And uh, so this is an innovative idea. So according to the constitution of our country, section 51A GB fundamental duty, it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife. And to have compassion, compassion, compassion for living creatures. Save mangroves, mangroves will save us. Protect mangroves, mangroves will protect us. Let us have a vision to see, vigor to act, heart to care, mother nature and her future. Thanks to Indian Institute of Science, the NBs for having given me this great opportunity of speaking about mangroves, the root of the sea. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, thanks for sharing the information on mangroves, uh, including from taxonomy to the uh, climate change. So uh, we have some a few questions here. So I will uh, just read out the questions so yes. you can help me out answering that. Sure, sure. Sir, it's my pleasure. There is a question from Manasvi Kiran. Sir, can you highlight mm. the impact of the dams on mangrove forest? Is there any alternative? Yeah. Uh, actually, you know, what happened? A study has been conducted, uh, you know, in Pitarkanika. In Pitarkanika, same problem. See, the dam construction is essentially important for drinking purpose, agriculture. You know, they are essential. See, the development is required, but at the same time, how much of water is required at the minimum for the sustainability of the coastal ecosystem is important. So we need more research on the minimum requirement of the fresh water for the productivity of the coastal ecosystems. So we need more research on that. So totally, completely, the entry of water to the coastal area should not be stopped. At least the 10 to 10%, 10 at least 10% of the water, uh, you know, should be let into the coastal waters. We need more research in this aspect. And unfortunately, in many uh, times, you know, the rainwater is failing and uh, natural calamities are occurring. But what is important, our planners should think of this. How much of seawater, how, how much of fresh water should be let into the coastal area for the better productivity of the mangroves and the backwaters. Otherwise, the coastal ecosystem will perish in the course of time okay thank you sir there is a one more question from uh, varun sharma so is there any policies directed hmm. at protection of mangrove forest like terrestrial plants uh, you know the protection of very dense mangrove forest should be the priority should be the priority and many places, you know, very large mangrove forests, you know, they are being cleared up. Protection is the top priority. Secondly, hydrological restoration. That is, I told you about hydrological connectivity. In many places, due to the lack of tidal water, because that flushing is very important, the soil should be massaged by the tidal water. So if the massage is not there for the uh, mangrove soil, the mangroves will not grow. So we should ensure the free flow of the tidal water. If not, we should go for hydrological restoration. This is second option. And the third option, the last option only, planting mangroves, planting. 
and in the planting mangroves also you know we should not uh, plant the exotic species but this compatible species for that system is important ecological restoration is very important the suitable species should be planted and uh, the mangrove species zonation should be maintained properly okay so uh, so uh, is there any policies directed at protection of mangroves so is there any policies the question highlights the policy yeah in the policy matter you know india is very strong in making policies and you see our uh, uh, you know carbon uh, policy is also there and the mangroves also you know we 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 had a committee national mangrove committee year back in 1980s and we developed excellent policy for conservation and management of the mangroves so what is important in many places especially karnataka i am talking about the mangrove forests they are in the private land ownership so many uh, 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 most of the i mean many mangrove areas are under private ownership so this is a very important uh, issue and uh, the government of karnataka should initiate some policies on uh, how to overcome this issue of private ownership okay uh, there is a question from manasvi prawn culture has high mm. pesticide input whether they have impact on mangrove forest no actually uh, you know the eco friendly aquaculture is very very important in the eco friendly aquaculture is very successfully demonstrated for example the crab fattening and uh, the 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 sea bass culture in the mangrove waters very successfully demonstrated but only thing intensive aquaculture should not be recommended or usage of the chemicals should not be recommended but usage of the local resources the organic type of culture integrated agriculture aquaculture you know pisciculture uh, you know silviculture type of integrated approach is very much needed for the future okay sir. so there is a appreciation from yogita thanks to the father of mangroves as you told sir karnataka has very mm. marginal mangrove cover but it has rich biodiversity mm. still it has underrated under yes undervaluation hmm. hmm yes you know actually in some areas of karnataka you know i inquired the local people what they feel is uh, when mangroves are growing the it's against the fishes so that means they have a wrong notion wrong ideas but their the awareness creation is very important i think now the awareness is uh, becoming better becoming better so more awareness should be created among the public and the fishermen and the fishermen should be very much involved in the integrated uh, you know coastal uh, management aspects and the participatory management should be given much focus okay sir uh, looks like there are no more questions so thank you mm. so much sir for answering all the questions and uh, uh, on behalf of envis uh, center from indian institute of science i thank you for uh, sharing your vast knowledge uh, with the participants mm. so the participants might be benefited by uh, with your uh, lecture so they might if they have any questions uh, uh, i am sharing your email id so they can uh, uh, write back to you and uh, yeah you can uh, help them out so with this uh, i thank mm. you so much for uh, sharing your knowledge sir thank you so much so uh, once upon a time i was the envis coordinator of uh, annamalai university and i am okay. very happy that uh, envi center is doing a good job in indian institute of science i think my best wishes congratulations for all your effort continue to do inspire the people inspire the people ignite the young mind so that they are the future of our country thank you very much
sure 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 sir we will do the same sir thank you so much so uh, dear students uh, dear students please subscribe to the channel so that you, you will come to know what are the webinars we conduct and also the lectures which are archived in our youtube channel so please share with your friends and also subscribe to the channel so uh, we will come up with uh, another new interesting topic soon so uh, stay tuned thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you very much